Hi everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Growth Tarot. I'm Denise, and this is uh, Saturday, December 5th, and I am going to sink into the cosmic laws of love and truth, which are one and the same, and the limitless abundance of the universe, and set the intention to get a message that will help us heal our souls. Something that we can uh, know, that we may go back and visit and redo and <laughs> go through several times or uh, perhaps daily if that's what it takes. And uh, But eventually we'll come back home to who we truly are. Okay. Okay, so we have the Seven of Wands for our theme. And uh, bookended, mirrored by the Knight of Wands, I'm sorry, King of Wands, and the Five of Cups. So when the Seven of Wands is uh, in the upright position, it's about taking a stand. It's about healthy boundaries, especially time management boundaries, because you, you can tell, you know, with the, the Wands energy, it's like spiritual essence and it moves quickly, it just goes out into the universe. It's that energy and consciousness that is always around us constantly and is also within the nucleus of every cell in our bodies. So there's, there's no separation between our creativity and the laws of love, the divine order in the universe. And we, you know, we're here as... Uh, Let's turn this guy right side up for a minute. We're here as consciousness and energy, like the masculine and the feminine, although this card doesn't have to be feminine, but just play with me here for a while. <laughs> so consciousness movement, the wands move. And then we have, so we all have, we all have a divine masculine within us and a divine feminine. There's no separation whatsoever in the spiritual realm, in the, you know, in our, our home from which we hail. There's no separation. But what happens is here on earth, um, it, it, it is, it does appear to be split. It appears that, uh, you know, there are men and there are women. <laughs> And we sometimes are uh, at war with each other, and we sometimes grieve over that. Now, let's just go back to the masculine and the feminine that, that's within each of us, and just, you know, let's be in this for a little bit. So with the masculine, now, again, like I said, within male and, you know, male and female, I, you're female, you have a masculine side of you. We all do. We, it, it, it's me that is speaking right now as part of my, um, I guess you could call divine masculine, and then, and then the part of me that's receiving the information from my higher self and my guides and the divine order in the universe, that's my feminine. So we can be giving and receiving at the same time. So anyway... Masculine, divine masculine is like spontaneous consciousness. And then the divine feminine, if if we had, let's let's say, well here, I can I can do this. I have my deck here that's all sorted out. Let's play, let me take this away for a moment. And this one. Actually, let's take both of these away for a moment. Divine feminine and divine masculine. Let's do a little tiny teaching around this. So uh, creation. Uh, reception, uh, the unendless, uh, you know, the limitless abundance of the universe, the, the um, universal forces of life and creation and co-creation. And then, so this would be like the divine feminine and energy and movement. And it creates uh, it, it opens to receive something and creates, you know, something. W without the divine feminine, we could never conceive or receive. And then, but we have the divine masculine. Now, I don't know if it's the chicken or the egg <laughs> that came first. And I don't, I think that honestly that that whole, that, that whole uh, conundrum is probably just steeped in duality. I'm trying to, to get inside of like a unitive place here where we all have the divine feminine and masculine. So when 
when consciousness, intention, movement meets, uh, you know, automatic law, uh, energy, uh, you know, uh, the, the receptive uh, source, what happens is, is that we create a life manifestation, which is why the Empress is uh, often in other decks seen as being pregnant. And it's ruled by Venus and, of course, Taurus and Libra. So, uh, because Venus rules Taurus and Libra. So it's about, you know, earthly manifestation and then the bridge, you know, the Libra bridge that uh, is from relationship to continue to create more and more. And then Mars and Aries is always wanting to lead and create and be present. And it's a, you know, very pioneering type of energy. I people who are very evolved and they have some Aries energy, um, especially Mars and Aries, they, these may be like the spiritual warriors, uh, you know, where they're not necessarily fighting, but holding a strong leadership position in uh, unity. And so this is where, you know, it's like consciousness and energy and then co-creation. And so energy follows consciousness and and then it blends back and forth. There's a blending back and forth, and and divine, you know, feminine and masculine. They it affects each other. Now, if we if we have any levels of uh, or as in whatever levels of unconsciousness we have within, what happens is is that. Um, the unconscious areas, because they need to be made conscious, they, um, they control our lives because we're always constantly, well, you know what, it's that, um, that, oh, let's see if I can remember, it's Carl Jung, I'm just trying to remember word for word, oh, I got it, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So, <laughs> so whatever, whatever is going on in our lives that we don't like, what's happening is, is that we're trying to become more conscious in, in a certain area, you know, to get through. Um, and, and this is, you know, to, to be with what is in our life and to get through the experience, not to avoid it. If we avoid it, we're going to keep recreating it. But um, to uh, to just be with what is. And then what I started to say is when I'm, when there are terrible things happening all over the world, you might, you might want to say something like, but things are awful. How can any of what she's saying be true? <laughs> okay. What I'm speaking to is just your life. I will be giving spiritual principles constantly. I, w I will be speaking to the spiritual laws of the universe, the universal laws of, you know, love, truth, and, um, you know, divine order, especially divine order with this card here. But you, if, you're, if you're worried about whether or not I'm telling the truth, just focus on your own life. And I... Uh, just because there's warring going on in some worlds, or some, I'm sorry, some countries, and just because people are hateful, uh, you know, in anywhere, and that's going on, uh, look at your own life. Is that going on in your own life? Are, are, you, are you coming from a warring, wanting to control place, which would be, could be like the emperor reversed? And and are we going to be like the shrinking violet that 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 says, oh poor me, I have to, I have to, I can't be in my own authority. I ha I can't create on my own, you know, which is not true at all. But if none of that's happening in your life, if you are your own inner authority and you do know your own creativity, then. You can be okay with the fact that, yeah, it's going on all over the world, but you can remember that this is an equal opportunity planet. And that means that any level of consciousness that is allowed to, you know, incarnate is allowed to, you know, to be here in order to heal and come back home to, you know, who they truly are. So now let me, let me, uh, Get back to these cards here so that um, we can get into 
that was kind of a little bit of a foundation, but now to get into the message, you can have really strong, healthy boundaries. This is that card that reminds me of like that last line in, in Stairway to Heaven that says to be a rock and not to roll. <laughs> you know, Led Zeppelin's the Stairway to Heaven. That very last line is about that place where you will not roll over and uh, give yourself away to negativity, to uh, negative pleasure, you know, um, to you know, being cruel and mean and, and in separation, um, to anything that feels like it, it's not the right way to go. It's not the healthy way to be. It's not what um, creates more life and more positive pleasure. Because what happens is, is and now I'm going to speak to, we do, we do need to, um, you know, hold that, hold that position of healthy boundaries. But now I'm going to speak to, with the King of Wands, when the King of Wands comes in reverse, this can be in the place where we've, something has happened um, in the past where either you had no encouragement, and so you felt maybe, um, abused. I mean, you have, this this is a card where you do have to be careful for bullies and uh, people who are ruthless and people who aren't loyal. You know, people who expect you to be absolutely 100% perfect all the time and they're going to be abusive if you're not. These two cards together is about finding your power and not giving yourself away to anyone who's abusive. And then coupled with the Five of Cups, it is about grieving the past where um, where you did feel unloved and how disappointing that is. And it can be a lonely card. And this can sometimes be, like if we didn't have the Seven of Wands here and we had more of a, a wimpy card, I don't know, what's a, what would be a wimpy card? I don't know, maybe uh, maybe the Two of Cups, something like that. Only I wouldn't call it wimpy. It would just be more like um, wanting to connect. But we, what we've connected with here has been ruthless and abusive. Well, I love that the Seven of Wands showed up because that is the message that uh, we are determined. We are in control. We protect ourselves. We have our self-assertion. And there's, there's no need to um, go back into this unless we want more of this grieving and disappointment and pain. Now, sometimes, imagine, imagine this person that was the most abusive. Like, imagine this was a parent or a caretaker. Or maybe you didn't have a father and this was a stepfather. Or maybe you just never had a father at all. Maybe this was that maybe this was growing up without a father. If that's the case, because this would be a very unavailable, it wouldn't be ruthless, it would be more like unavailable. Which I think probably could be more like in the King of Swords or the King of Cups, but I'm just gonna go with it because it's what's coming through. So pretend it's any king. Pretend it's any lack of healthy healthy, um, healthy, protective, masculine. You know, when we're children, we need protection. We absolutely need our mother and our father or grandparents or someone, caretakers of some type to protect us. Otherwise, we won't survive. But what if, what if we didn't have much of that? And what if um, because of that pain and that fear, we're, we've walled ourselves off. Like, this is another place where the Seven of Wands could be uh, a little too much of, you know, like taking a stand to stand up for yourself. Some, sometimes, I'm just putting this out there for some of you. Um, and that that will just create more of that feeling of loneliness. So the key is always to find yourself. The key is to always know that you have everything inside of you to create anew, whatever it is that you want in your life. And that when we dive into whatever the limitations of the past were, and we experience, re-experience the painful past, we clear it out. 
It's by meeting, it's by literally meeting the grief that we clear out the places in the past where we have been abused. Now, for some of you, this can be healing this place where you have been abused, but but now you're feeling kind of lonely because the you know the the new the new healthy relationship hasn't shown up. And um, for some people, this can be you know just some newly letting go of a of an abusive relationship, which is which is really really healthy. And to know that. When you do that, it's actually an act of love, not only for yourself, but for them, because you're teaching them that they're not allowed to abuse you, you know, whether you're a woman or a man, whether this is a woman or a man, and whether this is a woman or a man. doesn't matter what gender. All that matters is, is that you deserve to be loved and respected and, and treated tenderly. And anybody in your life that is not of that uh, consciousness uh, needs to be uh, kept out. You need to keep those doors closed. Because if you keep letting them in and letting them hurt you, then you're teaching them that, number one, I, you believe in the same type of abuse that they do. And this is, you know, this is those painful places where we can have uh, love and abuse like crosswired in our souls. Like it needs to, it needs to be the, the energy current needs to be um, like straightened out instead of being all twisted and tied up in, in the past. But this is what happens when we have parents who have spanked us. This is what happens when we've had parents who have yelled at us and who have pushed us around and been abusive in any other ways. There's, there's, there's so many ways that children, that little ones, uh, can be abused. And then when that happens, uh, their trust is broken. They don't trust the parents anymore. Of course, they still love them. You know, deep down inside, you still love them. But you don't trust them. And then therefore, because you can't trust your caretakers, you do not feel safe. But the love is still there and that connection is still there because you need to survive. And then we carry that with us. And then we grow up and we get out, we go out into the world and we get into these painful, abusive relationships again. And we can't figure out what's going on because we're, until we do, you know, we're, we are becoming more and more and more conscious of um, finding our own light, finding our own authority, coming into touch with our own power, where, where we say, uh, no, I'm the one that, that controls my life, and if you're going to be abusive to me, you have to go. I am not going to be involved in that in any way, shape, or form, you know, whether you're male or female, whether this is a friend or a lover or a family member. The second they start yelling at you or calling you names, you're gone. That's what this card is all about, these two cards together. Because if, if we allow it, then we're just going to have more grief. And on another level, on the deepest level, just know that you're not done until you're done. If you have to go through another round of this to, to um, get in touch with some deeper levels of being abused, and I'm um, disrespected, no matter how minor it is, then that's okay. Just experience it. When the grief comes up, don't avoid it, don't numb out, and don't shy away from it, and all will be well. Eventually, you will turn this all upside, you know, right side up, and then, I don't know if this would be upside down, because this could be like avoiding grief, but then again, it could be that you're done grieving. And all the emotions of the five cups are clear, and now it's pure feelings. You know, that, that's the difference between emotional, uh, emotional reactions, emotions, and feelings. E emotions can have, most often, are full of, and I know in tarot they just talk about, you know, it's the cups being emotions. Well, emotions can have emotionally reactive material where you're in an emotional reaction. And an emotional reaction is either aggression, submission, or withdrawal. But when you've cleared out all those forcing currents of aggression, submission, and withdrawal, what happens is, is that your emotional body uh, flows freely 
And then, let me find... Well, is partly partly within uh, the temperance card because the the emotional the soul substance is is constantly flowing back and flowing back and forth back and forth until we're you know we get we get the emotional body purified. But the card I was looking for is well, there's two of them actually, and when they're straight up, it is the queen and. King of Cups. So that that is the process. Once once the emotional body is clear enough from emotional reaction, so that means we're no longer uh, running away from relationship. We're no longer pushing people away. We're no longer trying to control them, and we're also no longer submitting in an unhealthy way, which is what this card is all about. You know, this, this card does not submit. This card has a strong, healthy boundary. And this card knows their self-worth. And to whatever degree we don't have that, you know, yet we're going to be, we're going to be grieving. But like I said, we're not done till we're, till we're done. So never beat yourself up for going through it again. And it's like, it's the same thing as um, like going through rehab. They say it takes at least eight or nine times for people to, um, you know, going through rehab to finally like clear addictions completely out. And they may still always, you know, stay involved in like any type of, you know, 12 step program and help others as well and sometimes that's what the calling is about um but anyway let's to get back into the difference between emotion emotions and feelings when your emotional body is clear enough and it gets clearer and clearer as you go as you grow <laughs> what happens is is that then you can trust your feelings they're pure, they're pure streams their feelings are like streams of consciousness that that change and they come from your your own conscious you know body and and your wise unconscious as well but they're both of these cards have the queen and the king both have he's a little more organized in it but they both have uh you know emotional intelligence is the way i like to say it except for maybe it would be better to say feeling intelligence or the intelligence of the pure streams of feelings that can flow through and then it can be like those creative moments where you get an idea, and and especially with the King of Cups. And it can also be um, that place where you realize that you create your own reality. And the universe is bound by law to receive you. You know, we have one, one foot in the water here, which is the, you know, they always say emotional body. But it could be the feeling body once it's clear, and then the other one is totally grounded in on the earth, and you're like that bridge. You know, you're part of you're part of bridging the gap from duality back to unity, to where, you know, it doesn't matter when we have problems in our physical lives. We know that we can handle it, and uh, we have support. We have support. We have like the healthy parents inside of us. Who, and we trust our feelings. And that's even true, like if something comes up where you're, all, you're suddenly afraid when you normally don't go through life fearful, and then suddenly you're afraid, well then you want to trust that because it's a warning. So your emotional body can guide you. And we all have a unique path. So we can't say that there's a one-size-fits-all, but we have a unique path in your your. Um, divine intelligence, your emotional intelligence, your feeling intelligence, whatever you want to call it, it will guide you, you know, for the for perfect way that you need to go. And then from there, of course, that's where we have, you know, those, those really nice, healthy, healthy boundaries, as we have right here. But whatever however many times we have to grieve, you know, to, to get through the places where we have been abused and mistreated and not treated gently. And for me, it's like the work always seemed to go back and back and back until it just became like, you know, infant, pre-verbal, 
can't make sense out of it, but you feel it and there's a sensate awareness and, or there's some uh, feeling unsafe, all of those feelings, if you just keep working through it, it doesn't matter. You just be with whatever feelings come up. Don't push them away. But then keep coming back to your light, to who you truly are. And eventually you'll, you'll clear it all out. And then you won't let anybody. You'll become your own protector authority. You know, you'll be your own, your own dad. And you have your healthy mother as well inside of you. And this is how we reparent ourselves. And this is how we get our creative forces back into flow. And then when we have that, what happens with the Seven of Wands is we push out anything that is um, going to mm, take us down the wrong path, take us down a rabbit hole, uh, give our power away, because we prior prioritize ourselves in life, in our day-to-day -day life. And I'm not talking about being selfish. I'm just I'm talking about... Uh, knowing what's most important to uh, be with and accomplish. And, you know, like we're not going to sit around and watch soap operas all day or we're not going to sit around and watch the negative news all day. We're not going to go around the house raging about the way things are. We're going to be in our own creative life. This is a very, very um, uh, strong card for being in that place where you're going to settle into your own creativity and you're going to push out any, like, negativity. You're going to stay with your own positive creative forces. So, okay, well, I think that's all I have for today. I don't want to let this video get way too long. Um, but that's it. <laughs> okay, you guys. Love you. Take care. Bye.